We worship Him and give Him thanks for the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. Um, had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Did you have a good Thanksgiving this year? Were you, did you just really get blessed? I'll tell you, um, it, it was wonderful here in the house, as was mentioned. There were 80 families that were served on Thanksgiving Day right here at Happy Home Church. Now that's, now that's a big deal. That's a, people from all different races and, and uh, groups and nationalities were gathered together under, under one place around the table at Thanksgiving. What a blessing that was. And, and what a blessing it was that you, um, our, our church family, uh, provided food and, and, and the opportunity to be able to bless so many families in Jesus' name. You came out and you worked, you labored, you provided things. Listen, it, it, maybe you weren't able to get here. You, you know, y- your tithes and offerings, when you give and you sow into the kingdom of God, those monies are going to accomplish that purpose. So everyone here in this house had a hand in serving families in Jesus' name. Aren't you excited about that? That's a good deal. That's a good deal. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to the Lord. Well, this morning as we, as we look to the Word of God, we're mindful of the leftovers of Thanksgiving. Now, I don't know if you still have any leftovers. Does anyone in the house still have anything left over from Thanksgiving? Are you still eating that? Um, maybe, maybe, you're here, maybe you're here today and you have, um, you're going to have, how many of y'all are fixing to have some of that for lunch this afternoon? Yes. Amen. I was... I was talking to my mama the other day, um, uh, last night on the telephone, and she said, Tommy, I think I'm going to have a BLT for lunch today. I said, really, Mom? She said, oh, yeah. And she said, but I'm going to put turkey on it, too. (laughs) I don't know what you call a BLT with turkey. I have no idea what what that turns into. Apparently, that morphs into something else, but... What's that? A bacon, turkey, and lettuce and tomato sandwich. A BLTT or something. I don't know what it would be, but it's, but it's uh, whatever it's called, she's going she's gonna to find some way to do it. You know, I was thinking about something, too. You know what I would love to have? And, and, and I haven't had any of this in a long time. I was um, at the, um, when I was pastoring at Poplar Branch Baptist Church, a lady came to me one day who had, who had, just, who had just tried a new dish. And she said, Pastor, I just made you a new soup. And she said, do you like chicken noodle? I said, absolutely. She said, try some of my turkey noodle soup. Turkey noodle soup. Now, doesn't that sound great? Okay. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Brother Jeremy's the only one back here going like that. <laughs> Turkey noodle soup. Doesn't that sound good? Amen. All right. You know, there's a lot you can do with leftovers in there. There's a whole lot you can do with leftovers. And I don't know about you, but a lot of men, I find a lot of men don't like leftovers. Men, do you like leftovers? Is there, is there a man in this house that despises leftovers? You just, you can't do it. Amen. Elder Johnny said, I just can't do it. There's something about it. There's something about, I, I mean, I personally, I personally am not a big fan of leftovers. And I want you to know this morning, as much as, as, much as I have something against leftovers, I want you to know this morning that we serve a God who is also not very fond of leftovers. And let's face it, we probably have some things left over from Thanksgiving. But I'm convinced this morning that God, the more I look at the Word of God, the more I find that that the Lord doesn't want what's left over in our life. God wants the best and the first things in our life. And I began to consider that and began to look at some things and found an Old Testament scripture, I think, that really conveys this. It's found in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. And in this passage, David had an opportunity. 2 Samuel 24, 24. David had an opportunity to receive a gift. And that gift he could have presented to the Lord. And so it didn't cost him a dime. It didn't cost him anything. 
He was going to get a free... By the way, sacrifices in Bible days were very costly. David had an opportunity where he could get a sacrifice to give to God and it would have costed him nothing. And the Bible tells us in 2 Samuel 24, 24 what the Lord thought about that and what David thought about that. Look at what the Bible says here. Then the king said to Aruah, No, but I will surely buy it. David said, I, I, I'm going to buy the sacrifice from you. Why? Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, which that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. I want you to notice something here. David said, I will not give to the Lord that which cost me nothing. David could have gotten something for free and he, and he said, look, if it doesn't cost me anything, it's not a sacrifice. And I am convinced, David said, if it doesn't cost me money, if it doesn't cost me time, if it doesn't cost me my talents, then why would I offer it to God? Why would I offer to God that which doesn't cost me anything? Now that's a good question, isn't it? And I believe that that's a question that's relevant for us today. God doesn't want our leftovers. And I'm convinced of that this morning as I study the Word of God. How about Malachi? Turn to the last book of the Old Testament. The book of Malachi. The book of Malachi talks about something here very powerful. Turn to Malachi, if you would, in, your, in the Scriptures, chapter 1. Beginning in verse number 6. Let me show you this here in, in the Word of God in another place. God has the same attitude toward leftovers that a lot of us do. Malachi chapter 1, beginning in verse number 6. The Bible says, A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? If I am a master... Where is my reverence? So, so the Lord of hosts says to the priest who despise my name, yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? How, God, how have we dishonored you? And God tells us here in verse 7, you offer defiled food on my altar, but you say, in what have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. Verse 8, when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And then you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? The Lord was asking His people here some questions. And I believe that if we'll listen long enough when we pray, folks, prayer is not just talking to God. Prayer is also listening to what He'll say. The Lord asks us questions when we pray. The Lord asks some questions to the prophet. And the question is, why would God accept the lame and the blind and animals that remember the under Levitical law, the animals had to be perfect, they had to be spotless, they had to be without blemish. If you'll remember in the book of Leviticus, God's law required it. But what the people did is they said, It's okay if we give to God what's left over, we'll just keep the rest for ourselves and we'll honor, we'll still, hey, it's better to offer something than nothing. It's something is better than nothing. And we live in a world today that has that mentality. Well, I did something and it's better than nothing. And, but what God is saying, God said, why would you offer that to me? Why would you give me the second best? And I'm convinced of this. God doesn't care how much we give. He cares how much we keep for ourselves. Let's face it. God is more concerned about the quality of of our giving instead of the quantity. People say, man, if I spent more time in prayer, if I, if I gave more money, if I did more, everything is about more. We have this works-based salvation. And folks, I, I want you to know, the Lord has been dealing with me. God spoke to my spirit the other day. You know what he told me? He put in my spirit. God said, Tommy, it's not that I want more of anything. I just want your best. God doesn't want me just to do more. 
He wants me to give my best, my first. And you see, God's not into the other stuff. Amen. I want you to know God doesn't want your leftover time. He doesn't want your leftover talents. He doesn't want what's left over. He wants the first and the fresh stuff. You see, I am convinced in Jesus' name that God is concerned about our life and giving Him the very best. And I believe this morning that there's two ways that the Lord wants our best. The Lord wants our best in two areas of our life. The first one, the first one is found in, uh, look with me if you would to Proverbs 3.9. Look at Proverbs 3.9 this morning. Let me show you what God wants. The first thing that God wants is the best of our things. He wants the best of our things. Uh, Proverbs 3.9 is a great passage of scripture. Take a look this morning at Proverbs 3 9. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Oh, this is such a powerful passage, y'all. This is so good. The Bible says, Honor the Lord with your possessions. Honor, honor the Lord with your possess, with everything you own. How do we honor God with our possessions? Well, look what the Bible says. And with the first fruits of all of your increase. So I want you, I want you to notice that God didn't say, give me what's left over. God never asked for what's left over. God said, if you give me the first fruits under the Old Testament, under Levitical law, if a person, if a, anytime a person receives something, they gave immediately 10% of that or a tithe immediately back to the Lord. Anytime that they receive something, they immediately gave 10% to the Lord. That's what's honoring God. That's what the first fruits are. But what we do sometimes is we take care of everything else, and if we have leftover things, leftover money, then we offer it to the Lord. We give to the Lord our leftovers. You see, and what happens is God doesn't like leftovers. He doesn't want, that's why he said that I want your first fruits. I want what's first. I want what's fresh. If you don't believe that, let me just put it this way. I, I, can I say something nasty this morning? Would that be all right? One nasty thing. Amen. I got everybody's attention. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody weren't listening. Now you li- Okay, here it comes. Okay, this is really gross. All right, let's say you would probably have not a drop of problem in the world. If, I'm, if I had a full bottle of water here and I offered you a drink, you would, probably, you would probably accept that drink. If I had even taken a few sips of it, you probably would be all right with it if you had to. Now, some of you are going, that would be gross already. <laughs> Amen. But what happens is there, there is something else. Now, If I drank it all the way down to this piece right here, that little bit left right there, how many of y'all would want that? Here you go. See, now Miss Polly, bless her heart. She loves me, that's why. So some of you wouldn't drink, some of you wouldn't drink after me if it was full. Amen. Some of y'all, some of y'all. Now, you know why? Because you know what that is right there. And in fact, if you were, if you grew, if you, amen, amen. Now, now you, you know what I'm talking about. If you went, if you went to, this, this stuff right here that's left over in the bottle is something called backwash. Amen. And what happens is this, is backwash, you know that backwash is the nastiest part of a drink in the world. So even if you wanted something to drink, you're not going to do that because it's, because it's the leftover, it's the backwash stuff from what's left over. How many of you think that's nasty? God said it's nasty when you keep offering what's left over. And folks, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you spend more time, more time, more money, more, more, more. God doesn't want more. Oh, I've been living under more for so long and I've been preaching more and I've been wrong. All I've done is I've told churches for years, do more, serve God more, more, more. 
But what's happened is, as God said, I want, your, I want quality. I don't want quantity. It's not about the amount. It's about, it's about what God comes first. And I'm convinced, I've lear- I'm learning, I'm learning in my life and I haven't got this mastered to honor God with what's first. So as soon as I receive something, I give immediately to the Lord. And I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about in every area of my life. Honor God. Amen. Did you know that your thoughts ought to first be on God. The Lord said, blessed is the man whose mind is stayed on me. The Lord ought to be my first thought in the morning. The Lord ought to have have my first thoughts instead of negative. And again, I've said this to you the other day, but Jack Frost pointed out in his his book, Slavery to Sonship, that 80% of what we think about is negative. And I did, I really did a test. I, I did a clicker on my pedometer it clicked. I did one day for a couple hours. Every time I had a negative thought, I pressed the button. And within like two hours, I had like 400 negative thoughts. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I was like criticizing everything. And I want you to know that that's not God. That's not God at all. In fact, I was giving God my second thoughts. Well, on second thought, I'm going to work and then I'm going to think about the Lord. Here's the, here's the other thing. Can I tell you something? Let me confess something else I've done. Have you ever done this? And please don't be holy. If you've done this, please, um, God knows your heart. Um, And, 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 you know, here's the thing. Have you ever said to yourself, Lord, I'm going to spend time with you in prayer. Let me get all this work, these things I got to, that way I get it off my mind. That way I can pray with a clear conscience. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to think about it. So you go and you do all this stuff. And, 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 so, and so what? Because you want to clear your mind first, clear the stuff. That way you don't think about it. And the next thing you know, you never get around to it. You see what, you see what happens is, is giving God our seconds. People have done that in our tithing and our giving too. So what we do is in our tithes, and our, the average church member only gives on average less than 2% of their, of, their, of, their, of, their, of, their, of their giving to the Lord. And we say, I've got so many bills. I've got so many other things. The Bible says to honor the Lord with your first fruits. And then in the next verse, it says that your barns, you won't be able to contain the blessing of God. You say, well, I don't believe it It works. Well, have you ever tried that? Because according to the word of God, Malachi said that I will pour you a blessing that the wind, I will open up the windows of heaven will pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to contain. That's what the scripture says. So honor God with the first of your life, your first thoughts, your first tithes, your first talents. Oh, everything ought to be the Lord first. Jesus first. Lord, help me honor you. God, help me honor you with my firsts. Turn, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. Ephesians 5, 16. Verse 15, Ephesians 5, 15. Look at what the scripture says here in the New Testament. The Bible says, See to it that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Some Bible translations say, make the most of every opportunity. Why? Why is that? Well, because God wants... Mm. I forget how many seconds there are in a day. But in an average day, there's so many thousands of seconds. I don't remember what it is. And the thing is, is once they're past, they're gone. You can't get them back. Have you ever noticed that you can never get a day back? You just simply can't. 
So what happens? Once it's gone, it's gone. And God says, I've given you so many seconds of, of a day to serve me, to worship me. And once they're gone, they're gone. So what happens is this. And every day you get a new set of seconds. Think about this for one minute. And so, so each day I have so many minutes, seconds, hours to honor God. The question is, is am I making the most of that time to honor God with my life? Am I, am I giving him the first of my time, my talents, my thoughts? Am I really doing that? And I, and I have to, and I simply had to ask myself, why should we do that? Because the days are evil. Because you know what? That, that next part of that verse tells us, because the enemy is going to take that time. And so what happens is the enemy will use that time if you don't. Now, now th this was revelation. I was praying through this passage and the Lord, the Lord revealed to me something powerful. And I want to show you this. Well, let me show you what the, what, the Lord, what the Lord revealed to me here in this passage. This was, this was, this was good. If you, if, you look at, if you look at verse 16 carefully, Ephesians, look carefully. Verse 16, redeeming the time, making the most. It literally means to make the most of, 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 the, of, of the time we have. Redeem means to set free. When you set free, you, you release it. So I'm to release stuff in a powerful way unto the Lord. I'm to release great things for the Lord with the time that I have. Redeeming the time. Why? Because why? The days are evil. Because if you don't use that, the enemy will use that time. So what the Lord showed me is every second that I, don't, that I don't spend honoring God, the enemy is using that time up. And I want you to know that that absolutely just got, I said, man, so I, that's why I'm supposed to make every second count for Jesus and advance the kingdom. Oh, but I don't do that. And so, and, so, and so what the Lord showed me is that the time, oh, it's not about more. It's about my first. My first. I'm supposed to honor God with my first. Why? Because He is my first love. My first love. The, the Bible says in Revelation that the Lord told the church in, in Revelation that they had lost their first love. It was the church of Laodicea. So what happens is, is some of us aren't aren't having Jesus first in our life. Jesus ought to be first. Oh, God, I want you to be first in my life. And I've got to put him there. I've got to put him first in my life. Let me ask you a question this morning. Have you given Jesus the first of your time? He doesn't want leftovers. Have you, are you giving Jesus the first of your talents or your service? So you see, so are you giving Jesus the first of your thoughts? Are you giving Jesus the first of your income? Sometimes we come to, we come to church... We come to church and say, oh, I'll be at church. And I've heard someone say this. Oh, pastor, I'll be at church as long as nothing happens. As long as nothing comes up. What they're really saying, I'll be there as long as something more important doesn't happen. That's exactly what they're saying. So, so I, I, will, I will do that. I, God, I will serve you as long as I don't have anything else that I would rather do. And let me ask you a question this morning. Are you here today because you didn't have anything else to do on the, on the schedule today? Or are you here because you literally had a desire to worship God and, and give Him the first part of your week? Does that make sense? It's a good question, isn't it? Did you honor God with the first of your tithes this morning? Or did you give to Him what was left over after you paid everything else? Did you honor God with your tithes? Thirdly, do you honor God with your time? Or do you just simply give Him what's left over? Remember, we're to redeem the time. Why? Because if not, the enemy will use it. The enemy will, turn, the enemy will take that same time and do something bad with it. Whatever we don't use for the Lord, 
the enemy uses for himself. That, puts, that makes things very different this morning, doesn't it? I don't know about you, but I want Jesus first in my life. Did God give his best? You better believe he did. The Bible says that, <laughs> but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The righteous for the unrighteous. The Lord gave his best, spotless, sinless son of God. When we gave our worst, the Lord gave his very best. Why would we offer him anything different? This morning, this morning, if you think it's nasty about backwash, how does God feel about what we are offering? Maybe this morning the Lord has touched your heart and there's something you would like to offer God. First and foremost, you say, this backwash, this, is knit. this ain't going to do it. God wants my best. God wants my very best. Maybe this morning the Lord has touched your heart and you would like to bring... Hey, do you remember when, the, when the, the Magi brought gifts to Jesus? They brought their very best before Him. And so this morning God wants our best and not our leftovers. Our first. I, there was a church sign that I saw in Elizabeth City the other day as I was going... I think it was uh, Faith uh, Assembly of God Church. There was a sign... And it said, give to God that which is right, not which is left. Father, help us this morning to give to you that which is right, not what's left. This morning, we honor you with our best. We give to you our best thoughts, our best things, and our best tithes. My family, what can you offer to the Lord this morning that's your best? Father, we thank you that you did not withhold your best from us. When we were at our worst, you gave us your very best in your son. So, Father, we, since we're your children, we just want to take after you. And so, God, this morning, we make a decision to be intentional about offering you our very best in Jesus' name. And, Father, we pray that you'll help us to offer to you our best thoughts, our best things and, our, and, our, and the best of our tithes and the gifts that you've given to us. So Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for how you have challenged us and touched our hearts today. God, this morning we offer you the fresh and the best, not the backwash, not the leftovers, but God, we want to honor you, God, with our first and foremost. For we thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. My family, I wanted to share with you a, um, 
just um, just one thing. Well, in regards to tonight, I, usually we have services on sun, on Sunday night. Uh, tonight there will be um, there will be no no evening service tonight. There is a um, Christmas program at Warwick Baptist Church as you're heading toward. Um, um, Gates, as you're heading toward Gates, and so it's over there on the uh, on the right hand side there. The church is. We've got some folks from our church that are in the in the program, and some other churches are involved in it as well. So uh, we want you to be aware of that. Also, uh, please take a look at your bulletin. All the announcements. We're not going to go over them, but please uh, be sure to note the announcements are in here. And this coming Wednesday night, we are starting Christmas services, and so. Uh, you're going to be blessed. We're going to be doing the, the traditional Christmas songs. And so at 730, beginning on Wednesday night, start all, the entire month of December, you will not want to miss the Christmas services. They're going to be very good. And they're going to be especially meaningful to you. So uh, th this coming Wednesday night, Elder Walter Byram is going to be bringing the Christmas message. And I'll be asking some other people to bring a Christmas message. Um, to share with the congregation on those times. We'll sing the old songs and we'll have uh, just a number of exciting things, uh, object lessons and different things going on. So it's going to be wonderful services beginning Wednesday night. Amen? And may the Lord bless you. Yes. There is a fifth Sunday singing. That's right. There is. Um, fifth Sunday sing also. That's right. Thank you, uh, Deacon. Um, we're at Hunter's Fork Church is having the fifth Sunday sing. They're, they are hosting tonight. So, so, you know, if you'd like to go over there, go over there as well. I mean, there's a couple of different options for, for this evening. But the important thing to remember is we will not be having service here tonight at Happy Home. So uh, I think that should pretty well do it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Enjoy the rest of your day in Jesus' name. May God bless you, my family.